What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some of the most unguardable routes to use in one-on-ones. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you are a wide receiver or a quarterback and would like to train with us this offseason, we are going to be traveling out to 13 more states across the country for two-day-long QB and wide receiver training camps. Next up on our camp tour, we'll be coming out to Phoenix, Arizona, then Charlotte, Dallas, the DMV, St. Louis, Honolulu, Boston, Cleveland, Austin, Seattle, Newark, Denver, and Los Angeles, California. So if you guys are local to one of those cities, would like to train with us for two whole days, eight hours of training total, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd absolutely love to have you out. Let's get started with this video. So we're going to be going over a series of routes, a series of moves, a series of releases, cuts at the top of the route that are unguardable in a one-on-one setting or just a man-to-man coverage setting in a real game. So the first one I want to talk about is how you guys can beat a DB who is right up on that that line of scrimmage, not giving us any room, and he is going to be real physical. This is a popular style of DB play, but is a very undisciplined style of DB play that should be easy to beat as a wide receiver. We should welcome this. So let's play this clip full speed. So this wide receiver is running a post route. This wide receiver does something we call a step back release versus a physical DB. Now this is just this is an easy way and just create more space for yourself off the line and to give you more space to operate. So sometimes DBs will try to be even more physical than this guy is. They'll be leaning forward. You can tell they have too much weight on the front of their foot. They're, they're ready to just lunge and try to choke you off the line because they're trying to make that highlight clip. They're trying to get on posted on Instagram or TikTok or whatever it is. But as a receiver, we need to have a plan for that style of DB. I come up to the line. This guy's crowding me. He's not giving me any room. I know he's going to jam. A step back release is a great way to combat that. So all step back releases is literally exactly how it sounds. You take your front foot and you just step back off the line. You create a little bit more space between us and between the DB. Because if he lunges at us even more so than what this DB does, he's going to be off balance. What a lot of guys don't understand is that when a DB lunges with his hands and tries to jam you, he is leaving his feet behind him and he is leaving his base. A patient DB who has been coached well, who has, you know, maybe a specific DB trainer, whatever it is, is always taught to stay in that base, always taught to keep your feet moving. But when you lunge and your feet die, that should be an easy beat from a wide receiver perspective. So when we step back, that just creates some more room for us. Now, a lot of people hate on this step back release because they say that it takes too long. Now, there are situations where you should do it and situations where you shouldn't do it. So if you're lined up in like a stack formation where you got like you're here and then you got another receiver who's behind you and it's very important that you get off the ball first and you get off the ball fast, we probably can't do a step back release because that's when you're going to run into the guy who's in that stack formation. So you're better off maybe doing something like a split release where you bring this back foot up even with your front foot. You try to freeze the DB, stay low, stay explosive, and just get up into the route. But if you're just out on the outside in the slot, maybe you're on the ball and you can't step off the ball, this guy's going to get hands on you, that's when you would want to use that step back. So now, guys will screw themselves because they'll step back like this and then they do all this dancing behind the line of scrimmage. But at the end of the day, the DB's entire goal when he tries to get hands on you is to disrupt timing with the quarterback. So if you're step back and then you're wasting time, DB did his job. He didn't even need to get hands on you. So just make sure when we do the step back release, we play it exactly how this wide receiver played it. He does this step back, but then he gets up into the route. He doesn't waste any time. He doesn't dance behind the line. And that is what can get a separation, fellas. So that step back release is great to use against that overly physical guy. Okay, so now, one-on-one setting, real game scenario where you're facing a DB who's in a ton of man coverage or just in a one-on-one camp setting because I know camp season is closely approaching us for all you high school wide receivers out there. Um, Pairing your releases together is one of the most unguardable things that you can do as a wide receiver because at the end of the day when it's man to man the reason why DB is such a hard position is because they don't know what we are doing and they're essentially playing backwards. It is incredibly tough. They're going off of tells. They're looking for any kind of tell in what I do with my release and during the stem of my route and the top of my route to let them know that I'm making a break or running a specific route. So a smart DB, and in one-on-ones, it's tough to do this, which is why you have to do this in one-on-ones. But a smart DB in a real game scenario, let's break it down real simple, is going to be watching a ton of film. 
He is going to be studying what releases we like to do, what routes we like to run. So when he sees you do that specific release, he sees you use that specific like tempo change on a route, for example, he knows what to expect. But if I can do that exact same release on one route and that exact same release on another route, that makes me unpredictable. And that forces that DB to always be a step behind me. So we're looking at two examples of that here from CD Lamb. So let's watch this first route. He's going to be running a slant. He's got inside shade coverage. So let's watch what he does. He does this little hesitation into this diamond release and runs a slant, making that DB think it's a fade by him exploding upfield. So what does he do off the line? He's got a slow tempo. We know when we have a slant route versus inside shade press, I don't want to try to attack his leverage. His sole responsibility is to protect the inside. He wants to force his outside because that's where his help is. But no DB in man coverage wants to get beat on a fade. So if I can sell the fade and attack his outside hip and outside shoulder, that can get him to flip his hips and run. So you see how Lamb, he comes off the ball, he gives a little hesitation slide and then accelerates up for three steps attacking outside hip and outside shoulder. That looks a lot like a goal line fade, right? Looks a ton like a goal line fade. And what does it get this DB to do? Open up his hips, and that allows us to slip back underneath with plenty of space for the QB to throw me open. Now, the two things I want you to pay attention here is the angle that he took off on, the tempo of the release, and the type of release that he chose. So now, we do this a couple times, and right, this is obviously building off of like that slide shuffle release to the outside. So if we do this, and we only use this type of release on a slant route, that is extremely predictable. If I come off the ball, and anytime I do this slide, I just have one move, and it's to run a slant. Anytime a disciplined DB sees that slide, he, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to sit to the inside. So how we can use that to our advantage, how I can reverse engineer that as a receiver, is I can use that to get into this DB's head. I can play a little bit of mind games with this guy. So let's play this full speed, and then we're going to show an exact same example of CD Lamb at the exact same practice doing this release. So let's watch what he does here. Now we're a little bit closer. We have the same type of coverage inside shade. Maybe we got this DB on a slant. Maybe this DB has seen me work this release on a slant. It's about being unpredictable. If you want to be unguardable, you have to be unpredictable. Because when a DB can start predicting what you were doing, that's easy money for him, and a talented DB will lock everything up that we do. So let's watch what he does here. He comes off the ball, hesitates, and then he gives this jab inside. You see the amount of space that he's able to get on that goal line fade. And on a goal line fade, that is wide open. That is a gift for that quarterback. So let's watch what he does here. He made it look the exact same. So he came off the ball, same type of tempo, same time of shuffle to the outside. Then what did he do? One, two, then he gave this little jab back to the inside making it look like he's doing that diamond release slant or that shuffle into that three steps to the outside running the slant. It looks the same. All he did was put just a single cut on the inside. He hesitates. He bursts to the outside, gives a jab inside. DB's expecting the slant, and that opens up the fade. That is as good of an example as you can get of pairing your releases together. Fellas, it's not about having complicated moves. It's not about doing complicated releases. It's about being simple, being efficient, and knowing how to build. If you can build off of what you do off the line, top of the route, DBs, it's very, very tough to guard. Like, like great example is Devontae Adams. If you guys watch Devontae Adams' film, he probably does four releases. That's it. I, I have never seen him do anything other than a hezzy and go, a hezzy crossover, maybe like a double crossover off the line, and then just like maybe a split release and go. That, that's all he does. It's simple, but they all are relatively similar, and you could run relatively similar routes off of all those. Another great example is Cooper Cup. He does it the other way. He does it at the top of the route. So when you watch Cooper Cup, they run a lot of out routes, the Los Angeles Rams. Watch him. He'll run out routes off of a single cut. He'll run out routes off of a double cut, like a rocker step. And then he will run out routes off of a one, two, three. He'll go one, two, three rocker steps. That's three separate ways to run that out. And two of them look like you're running a post. Two of them look like you're running a rocker step post. He's building that's what you guys have to understand. It's about making yourself look unpredictable. It's a calculated position. Playing receiver is a lot more technical than people think, and it's a lot more calculated than people think. So let's play this again, full speed. Great job by Lamb, making this look the exact same. It's the exact same practice, exact same practice clip and situation. So now, another route, this is mainly a whole route, I would say, that I feel is unguardable in a one-on-one -on -one type setting, especially when you get head-up press, is a dive release 
five yard out. So what is a dive release? A dive release is one of my favorite releases to use against a head up coverage DB where we could really try to sell like I'm running a slant, I'm running a drag, whatever it might be. So you're, it's exactly how it sounds. You are diving to the inside, trying to get him to crash on it and then slip back to the outside to your out route or outside release. It doesn't necessarily have to always be an out route. So let's play this full speed. So this receiver dives to the inside, breaks off on the five yard out and you see the amount of separation that he's able to get here. So let's talk about it, right? To get this DB to commit, to get him to crash on the inside move, you got to make sure that we sell. When it comes down to running routes, especially against man coverage, especially against press man one-on-one -on -one scenario, there are three things that sell your routes. And you guys have probably heard me say this before if you keep up with my videos. Speed, stride, and body language. Those three things are the key in any scenario to get you open. So on a dive release, essentially what it is, is you are taking two hard steps on a 45, or I like to say at the shoulder and hip of the DB to sell like you're running a drag. So your first step is going to be at the right foot, one, two. But you see when he takes those steps, hips and shoulders are both committed. Eyes are forward. He's gaining ground. That means he's running with full stride and he's obviously got some speed. All those things, a DB has to honor that fake. It all comes down to being deceptive and being unpredictable, right? Like, so if you can commit to your cuts like this, you can run hard. You could actually run in full stride. You commit your hips and shoulders. All of those things is what will get a DB to bite. Because playing DB, like I said, is extremely hard. So I love a five yard out against this because when you slip back, if you run something deeper than a five yard out, like a 10 yard out, a corner, a fade, sometimes this DB can speed turn and be able to recover. But when you do this dive release and you're at five yards, you stay right in that blind spot. So this is a great release to use. If you guys are in a camp setting, one-on-one -on -one setting, you're coming up to your quarterback and you're telling him, and again, we got to keep things realistic. That's why I like this because this is a realistic game route. Come up to your quarterback, tell him five yard out. You're going up against a head up coverage DB. We do that dive release. When we burst up to that five yards, we are in his blind spot and he does not have time or space to speed turn. And I could break this thing off with a ton of separation. So dive release, five yard out is a great release to use versus head up press in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by this wide receiver selling the drag and then being able to win on that five yard out like we said. Okay, so now this next release here is one of the best press releases I feel you can use on any type of inside release route. So if you're running a post route, if you're running a dig and you have head up press coverage, or for example, if you have outside leverage coverage and you were trying to run an outside breaking route, but you want to attack this DB outside first, and it is going to be called a wide step release. So I'm sure some of you have heard of a wide step release, but what a wide step release is, is instead of doing anything with your front foot, you are going to step outside of the DB's frame with your back foot. This is one of the best moves that you can use. So let's watch this full speed what this wide receiver does. And this is against Richard Sherman. This ain't no slouch DB either. So he comes off the ball, explodes to the outside and gets that DB off the platform. Now the route cuts off here, but I really just want to talk about the release. So he ends up running like kind of an out route and Sherman completely guesses where he goes. Like it, it, there's no way that Sherman knew because he didn't give away the route, but he was running an out route and Sherman just like ran to this side and and the receiver ran right into him. It was just a total guess, total freak play. So that's why we're just focusing on the release here. So obviously with the release, we got some separation. We got this DB to jump. We got to move off the platform and we got the free inside release. So I want you to pay attention to where he does, what he does initially with his back foot. Because this release, when you're stepping with your outside foot, trying to step wide, we are trying to sell like I'm doing a speed release fade where I'm just taking off off the ball, I'm taking off fast, and I'm trying to just run around this DB. So we actually have to step there. We actually have to step like I'm running a fade. So to do that, we cannot come from a position of no momentum. We cannot be flat-footed. Because if I'm off the line flat-footed and then I just step with my outside foot, that's not enough explosion, that's not enough speed to get a DB to bite. We need some speed. So he takes something we call a kick step with that back foot. That is not a false step. A lot of coaches out there, old school guys, love to hate on that and say that that's a false step. That is not a false step. That is something I call a kick step, a prep step. It essentially loads up your hips. And again, if you guys have never done this, I really suggest you try it because it is a big, big game changer in terms of your speed and quickness off the line. So when he loads up like this and he kicks behind, that allows him to throw his hip and actually step outside this guy's frame. 
Because if you just try to step outside the DB's frame, but you don't load up your hips, you just come from a position like this, no momentum, and just step wide. If you just step and you don't bring your hip, that foot is way outside your frame, you have no explosion, and you're not selling with your upper half. Your upper half is what sells this movement, not your feet. DB's watching our hips, so my hip needs to go with the cut if I expect him to move. So that's why that kick step's important. It loads your hips so you can explode, step wide, Bring the upper half, as you can see, just like that dive release. Shoulders, or shoulders, hips, and eyes, and his foot are all committed. And that is what it takes to get a DB to move. So that wide step release, fellas, that DB has to honor that. Because like we said in the very first example, a DB... Yes, he's in man. Yes, he has leverage responsibilities. Doesn't want to give up the inside. Maybe he doesn't want to give up the outside, whatever it is. But he does not want to get beat on a fade. And he does not want to get torched off the line by a speed release. So if I can make it look like that, he has to honor it. But I have to bring my hip. I have to do that kick step. And again, you don't have to do the kick step. There are other things you can do, like taking a jab with the front foot if that helps, if that's more comfortable, whatever. But that kick step loads you and it helps throw you. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by this wide receiver getting Sherman to move off that block. And then obviously we already talked about top of the route. All right, fellas, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to leave that in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys as usual. And again, fellas, we are coming out to 13 more states this offseason for two-day-long QB and wide receiver camps. So if you guys are local to one of the cities we are traveling out to, we'd love to have you out to one of our camps. Very first link in the description below. I'll see you guys next time.